My mom feared for my life quite often in the lifestyle that I was living. At the time, I was living on my own because I had been kicked out of my house when I was 18 years old. I heard a loud bang. I heard my dog bark. Something hit my door and the whole door shook. Maybe had I left at that time, I would have been in that accident. I could have killed that man. And I thought to myself, if I go to sleep tonight and die, I'm not going to Jannah, I'm going to Jahannam. And I said to Allah, I will keep my hijab on. I will not let go of my religion for this dunya. I actually ended up getting to work on Star Wars. Who is Nyla Edwards? Can you tell us briefly about your background? Nyla Edwards is a lot of things. I think as a revert, we kind of have like two sides to us. So there's Vicky, who is pre-Islamic me, and then there's Nyla, who is the post-Islamic me. I've been able to carry some of who I used to be into who I am now, but a lot has changed in that time. I love filmmaking. I am someone who loves Dawa. I'm a mother. <laughs> as well, which is more of a new kind of side to me. I'm just a sister living in this world and trying to do my best to serve Allah with everything that I'm doing. How was your life in regards to faith? Did you have any faith before? Um, no, I was raised in an agnostic or atheist family. So my parents either don't believe in God or they are not sure. How did you first hear about Islam? Well, I didn't know that I'd heard about Islam at this time, but I guess this would be my first exposure. When I was in junior high school, so like 12 years old, I met my first sort of Muslim friend in Canada. She was Lebanese Canadian, and she taught me my first three Arabic or Islamic words, which were Allah, Wallah, Yalla. And every time we'd see each other, that's how we would greet each other for fun. So one of us would start by going Allah, and the other would be like Wallah, and the other one would say Yalla, and then we would hug. That would be how we said hi to each other and I didn't know but that was uh, three very important Islamic words. That was sort of my first sort of introduction or exposure to Islam. What was the thing that made you research religions? So I was living in Malaysia. I'd moved there when I was 15 years old. And Malaysia is obviously a Muslim country. And so I was so interested. All these people have a religion. All these people believe in a God or gods of some sort. What makes people believe in a God? Because I was so set on the idea that there was no God. Like I wasn't looking at religions to find God. I was looking at them to discredit the fact that there was a God. I was actually doing it for the opposite purpose than searching for religion. You know, subhanAllah, after I became Muslim, this was one of the main things that I thought about was I never had an example of a Muslim in my life. I knew so many Muslims, but none of them lived Islam. None of them represented Islam. And that's why I always say if I had converted because of the people I knew, I would have never become Muslim because I didn't have that example. And I think that's why Allah had to bring me to Islam in a very different way than someone around me. What was the thing that made question your beliefs? Was it an event or a thought? And when was it? It started before I realized that it was going to make me question my beliefs. I was about 21 years old. I was living in Malaysia. My best friend was there from Canada visiting and we were just having a housewarming. I just moved into this brand new house and I was upstairs. My best friend was downstairs and my dog was downstairs. So we were having a barbecue. The whole house was open. The glass sliding door and the wooden main door at the front of the house was open. And I heard a loud bang. I heard my dog dog bark and I just thought she'd hit something, knock something over. But when I went downstairs, my best friend looked terrified, completely petrified, frozen in her spot, staring at the door. And I asked her what had happened. And she said, my dog was walking towards the, the glass door and the door slammed shut in front of my dog. Nobody touched it. The wind could not close that door. It's not a swinging door. It's a sliding door. Like scientifically cannot close by itself. And we couldn't understand why. Why? So we just like, okay, let's just go out. We shut the house and we went out. And I think we went out drinking and just forgot 
that it had ever happened. And then my best friend left. She went back to Canada. And over the next couple of months, things happened inside the house, but I found excuses for each one. So maybe I left something here when I left the house and when I came home, it was over there. Or I heard something fall in my room, but nothing had moved. Oh, it was just the neighbor. It was something else. You know, you just make an excuse for it until one night I came home and I went to my room. I put my dog in her room. I got ready for bed and I saw the light was on outside of my bedroom door. So when I went outside, I felt a feeling and this feeling I had felt once more in my life and I recognized it immediately. The feeling is like a gripping in my chest, not my heart, not my lungs, in the center, something tight. And I felt this once before when I was 14 years old in Canada, I had gone out with my brother and his friend who was very much into black magic and ghosts. We call them ghosts. Obviously we call them jinn, but you know, non-Muslims, they call them ghosts. And he took us to this corner that he called ghost corner. He sat us down, he was doing something. I don't know, I don't remember what it was. And as he was doing this thing, calling on the spirits, I felt this feeling and I didn't say anything. I just sat there and he just looked straight at me and went, leave. And I was like, why? And he's like, there's something here and it doesn't like you. And I got up and I ran because I felt that, you know, and I felt this feeling again in my house in Malaysia, you know, almost a decade later. And I couldn't see it. I didn't know what it was, but I felt where it was coming from. It was coming from the top corner of my stairs. And again, I got very scared because I remember this feeling something doesn't like me. <laughs> So I shut my door, I locked my door. Well, why would you lock your door against a ghost? But you know, what are you gonna do in this situation? And when I turned around, something hit my door and the whole door shook. And I was just, I was absolutely terrified. I didn't know what to do, I was helpless. I didn't know what it was, I didn't know what it wanted, I didn't know how to fight it, how to protect myself. And my mind was totally clear. And the only word in my mind was Allah. Without anything else in the world to grab onto, I said, Allah, if you exist, protect me. And then I just went and laid down in bed. I put my laptop on and I just closed my eyes and I went straight to sleep. And it rained so much that night. And rain is like purification. And when I read in the Quran later that, you know, Allah brought the rain in the night to cover you and to, to purify you. And, and I was like, SubhanAllah, that's like how I felt that night. And so when I woke up in the morning, I had to reassess everything. I had to think about what happened the night before? What does this mean? And so I spoke to Allah and uh, I made dua in a way. And Allah says, you know, if you want to be guided, just ask and you're guided, isn't it? So without any knowledge of Islam or Allah or anything, I said, Allah, first of all, if you were there last night, thank you. And if you want me to be Muslim, you have to guide me because in 21 years of my life, nothing has ever shown me that you exist and no one could ever convince me that you existed. So guide me if this is what you want. After having that conversation with Allah in the morning, I think I felt, I just felt at ease. I think when you have Allah behind you, it's like you have an army behind you. I didn't feel afraid. I didn't want to live there anymore, but I didn't feel like anything was there waiting for me. And uh, from that day on, I was so interested in Islam. My boyfriend at the time was Muslim, so he had, subhanAllah, the answers to my questions. And so I started to ask him things like, why do you pray? What are you afraid of? What does Islam teach us? What does Allah want from us? And so he would teach me things like Allah loves patience. You know, Allah tells us to be patient. So when I feel impatient, I would try to remember Allah and I would say to myself, like, Allah loves patience, be patient. And I would see the situation change in front of my eyes. So I started like beta testing Islam in my life. I would start implementing Islamic values, living Islam into my life. This went on for about six months. During the six months, I also had a situation where I quit drinking completely. I stopped drinking alcohol. This was four months before I converted to Islam. And then it came Ramadan. And so I thought, if I'm gonna try to be Muslim, Ramadan's the time to do it because everyone's Muslim in Ramadan. But SubhanAllah, the day before Ramadan started, my boyfriend left the country to go back home for Ramadan. So I was totally alone to learn and be Muslim. I was just left on my own at this time. 
So I had to learn everything by myself. I got an English version of the Quran. I got some hijabs and I printed out how to pray and I put it down on the ground in front of me. And from the first day of Ramadan, I fasted. I prayed my five prayers and I read a juz of the Quran every day in English. So it was probably halfway through Ramadan, halfway through the Quran. And as I was reading the Quran, I continuously kept reading about myself. The person who has faith right in front of them, but they're blind, that they're being told the truth and they can't hear it. And I was like, this is me. Do I want to be this person? And it was Isha prayer. And I thought to myself, if I go to sleep tonight and die, I'm not going to Jannah, I'm going to Jahannam. And so I Googled, how do you say your Shahada? And I just sat there on my prayer mat and said, I bear witness, there's no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. So just as I came to Islam, you know, with Allah only, I actually took my Shahada, just me and Allah as well, <laughs> SubhanAllah. How did you feel when you took Shahada? All I have in my head is the image of me on the prayer mat. I remember, this feeling like angels are in your life, like SubhanAllah. The intercession and influence Allah has in your life all the time is so obvious. Allah says, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein. But as we sin, as we distance ourselves from Him, we don't actually feel that. There were times when I would cry because I felt so close to Allah. I would feel Him intervening in my life, protecting me in my life. There was one evening, it must have been a few months after I converted to Islam. I'd been at my friend's house that night and I'd left to go home. I got in my car, put in my GPS, and it kept taking me in circles. Takes me to a road that doesn't exist. Take me there. I could not figure out why I couldn't get out of this neighborhood. Like it was literally five meters, 10 meters from his house and I couldn't get away from this area. And eventually I just stopped someone in the street. I asked them, like, how do I get to this road? I ended up at a road, turned the corner and there had been a terrible accident. A motorcyclist was laying dead in the street. It must have only happened 15 minutes ago. And that was the time that I was meant to get to this road had I left directly from there, you know? And Allahu Alam, Allah knows best. But in that moment, I felt maybe had I left at that time, I would have been in that accident. I could have killed that man. And after I passed the accident, I just burst into tears. I cried the whole way home, thanking Allah for protecting me from being in that situation.